please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Good morning and welcome to Power Breakfast in the Mumbai News Centre. I am Anisha Jain and with me is Manglam Malu. Well, Manglam, good morning. The last trading day of 2017, the last working day of 2017. But it doesn't look like many people are on a leave. Look at the crucial SEBI board meet yesterday. And of course, the all-important Reliance Geo and Reliance Communication deal. That's absolutely right. You know, they say that you bat till the last mm. ball of the match. And that's perhaps what happened. So let's see what happens before the party begins, before the New Year celebrations begin. We have one trading day to go to. And we will take care of all of that as far as this show is concerned. Now, let's take a look at the Asian markets. They're absolutely mixed. Remember, Wall Street yesterday hit a 71st record high this year. But remember, the Asian markets' volumes are rather thin so uh, the Nikkei that one is up 0.2 percent retailers are underperforming out there but the energy and financial stocks doing well out there uh, not much big uh, in terms of change as far as the dollar yen is concerned yesterday was closer to that 112.9 uh, mark a little bit of strengthening seen there despite that remember volumes are thin the Korean index is shut in trade today so let's take a look at what the Taiwanese as well as the Straits indices are doing remember uh, both these indices will be in focus uh, the Taiwanese index up about six tenths of a percent, seven tenths of a percent was shut in yesterday's trading session. The SGX Nifty should come up for you, indicating an absolutely flat start as far as the start of the January series is concerned. Okay, and on Wall Street, Dow posts a 71st record close for the year with the index adding 63 points at close. The S&P 500 rose two tenths of a percent with utilities and telecommunications leading advances. Meanwhile, the Nasdaq also added around two tenths of a percent, supported by gains in big technology companies such as Apple and Facebook. In economic news, weekly jobless claims came uh, came in at two lakh forty-five thousand versus expectations of around two lakh forty thousand. The Chicago PMI for December rose to sixty-seven point six, its highest since March two thousand and one. Well, on that note, let's listen in to what the experts are making of the global markets going into 2018. The retreat in populism with the Macron election uh, and that, that European populism is still very much a risk. Uh, we see that in the Italian elections going forward. You see Catalonia is still an irritant uh, out there and a, po a possible source of volatility. So, yeah, politics is our main risk for next year, and it was our main risk for this year. It just didn't quite work out the, uh, to, to be uh, quite the negative that we, uh, we had anticipated. As long as uh, both OPEC and uh, U.S. oil producers can keep restrained in terms of their production, as demand increases, as the global economy improves, uh, we should see oil prices uh, remain firm and perhaps uh, rise gradually higher. That said, we think the ultimate cap on, on oil prices is the fact that you can find more of the stuff around the world than ever before. You can get more out of it, out of the ground than ever before, more efficiently, while at the same time the end user becomes more efficient in using it, whether it's business or the consumers. So ultimately, we think there's a cap on oil prices here, but we do think this uh, a high 50s, 60 level could be maintained uh, for the foreseeable future. All right, then shifting across the Atlantic in the European region, the markets ended lower as trade remained light amid the holiday season, so the volumes were rather low. The only outperformer there was the FTSE, which eked out gains of about two points and did yet another record high out there. But the CAC as well as the DAX, both of them down about six tenths to seven tenths of a percent. Similar cuts were seen across the periphery. If you take a look at the Italian index, the Spanish index, as well as the Athex, which was the key underperformer there with a cut of 1.3 percent. Remember, that one outperformed in day before yesterday's trading session with a gain of about 1%. So, bearing down there, uh, if you take a look at the outperformers there, we had Ukrainian index, that one continues to gain. It's in fact more than doubled in 2017 itself, more than 105% gains in 2017. And the emerging markets back, oil prices, oil futures hit a two and a half year high. So, that should be in focus, the Russian index in the green. And we understand that the metal space is buzzing too. So, the Brazilian index up about four tenths of a percent. Okay, let's also see what currency is doing in this last week of the year. The dollar actually weakened a bit to trade near a one-month low against a basket of major currencies. In the world of commodities, crude oil prices rise to trade near its highest levels in two and a half years. And from the precious metal space, gold hits one month high as weaker bond yields pressurize the dollar.
All right, uh, with just days to go before we bid goodbye to 2017, it's time for some crystal ball gazing as the US President Donald Trump completes two years soon. Where could be some changes in his administration? Eamon Javers looks at what we could expect from the Trump administration in the next year. We could see a much different group of White House aides advising the president in 2018. Insiders are watching for any signs of departure from National Economic Council Director Gary Cohn, who publicly split with the president earlier this year. Also closely watched will be the president's top liaison to Capitol Hill, Mark Short. And keep an eye on the president's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, and daughter, Ivanka Trump. With investigations swirling and legislative progress slow, some believe the power couple may want to return to New York. Second, the special counsel's investigation will continue to haunt the Trump administration in 2018. Already, Robert Mueller has obtained guilty pleas and cooperation from former National Security Advisor Mike Flynn and Foreign Policy Advisor George Papadopoulos. No one outside the special counsel's office knows exactly where he is going next. How will it all end? Three possibilities, more indictments, an impeachment referral to the House of Representatives, or a full exoneration of the president and his team. And third, the White House will try to capture legislative momentum after the tax debate. President Trump says one focus will be on welfare reform. He argues some unemployed people make more in welfare benefits than workers struggling with two jobs. That suggests he'd like to reduce benefits. But a senior administration official told me the plan will involve getting people back in the workforce and increased job training, suggesting an increase in certain benefits. Either way, the White House will try to get legislation through Congress early before midterm election year politics makes progress impossible. Well, back home on the Lal Street, <coughs> a last hour sharp drip actually dragged the market lower. Nifty ended below the 10,500 mark and the Sensex ended 64 points in the red. The broader markets followed a similar pattern. The mid caps and the bank Nifty ended flat as well. But how are the queues stacked up for today? Manglam will tell us more. Manglam, over to you. Well, you know, yesterday uh, the markets fell in the last hour of trade. That could be attributed to the music that was playing because of expiry. Nothing else. We start a new series. And remember, this is the last trading session. So not much in terms of queues. Actually, it's a good time to take a look back. I'm sure Nigel will give us much more uh, data in, in the latter part of this show. But just a couple of things that really stand out. This is the best year since 2014 when Narendra Modi was elected. And that time, the markets moved about 30-31%. And this year so far, the Sensex as well as the Nifty, they both moved 28-27% itself. Uh, there has been a sharp outperformance of the mid-cap index. If you take a look at the, all, all the indices, the mid-cap index has actually more than outperformed uh, the Nifty by about 18 percentage points. And the BSE Realty, at the start of the year, someone told you that real estate is going to do well. No one would believe it. And that one has really doubled this year. But for me, two things really stand out. It's the index heavies that really came to the party this year. Reliance was up 71 percent. HDFC Twins, LNT, ICICI Bank, all of them came to the party. And if you take a look at the IPOs, Yes, the broader markets performed and uh, the IPOs in this year, they did very, very well. Just a few of them that stood out. Out of the 35, I think 24, 25 are still in the green. Apex Frozen, Shankara build pro Building Products, T-Mart, Salasar Tech, all of them more than doubled your money. But re remember, this was also uh, coinciding with a global rally that we saw. We talk about gaining 28%. The Dow went ahead and gained about 42%. S&P, Nasdaq, all of them up around 30% itself. So... That's as far as this year is concerned. The big news today will, of course, be the Reliance uh, 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 Reliance Geo as well as Reliance Communications deal. Rel Geo will buy select assets of Reliance Communications. Coincidentally, it was also the Dubai Money's birthday yesterday, so that is something we. Uh, that's just a coincidence. Uh, in this year itself, uh, the uh, the telecom stocks, Reliance Communications was up 150 percent this month. Bharti uh, Airtel idea, both of them up around 40 to 75 percent. So consolidation in the sector really playing out. And as we start the January series, a couple of things. More conviction by the traders and we're at record high, so we need to know uh, what exactly is going to take place in January. So 73% rollovers, FIIs, there's 70% long in index futures. And we start the series with 2.2 crore shares in open interest. So we are a little heavy at the start of this series. So we need to know what exactly takes place. Last three Januaries, it's been go home or go big. If you take a look at Jan 15, 500 points. Jan 2016, we lost 500 points. 
and Jan 2017 we gained 500 points. Mm -hmm. So what happens in Jan 2018? Only time is to tell. So the key triggers, of course, it's the third quarter results. We have the uh, we have the base effect of demonetization. There will be pre pre budget news flow coming in. You know, rumors of LTCG and this and that. We'll have to keep an eye out on that. Government's borrowing program. More macros this uh, series than micros. GST revenue collection data, we'll watch out for that. And crude price movement, that is something we'll watch out for. Okay, so a lot of cues to watch out for, not just today, but even for the month of January, as far as market is concerned. But in terms of stocks, Mangal, you have been telling us that the party was in the mid-cap space, up around 46% for that index. Today, what are the key stocks? Of course, Reliance would top the list, right? Of course, Reliance tops the list. So Reliance uh, Communications, as well as Reliance Industries, we'll watch out for that, with, of course, the disclosure that Reliance Industries owns uh, the channel that you love and you love to watch. And uh, we'll also watch out for all the other telecom Telecom stocks because this talks about consolidation in the telecom sector. I remember Sunil Bharti Mittal telling Shireen that you know by the next uh, th uh, next time we speak, there would be lesser players in the telecom space. Lupin, that stock, they have received a US FDA approval for generic Tovonex scalp solution. Watch out for that. Care and Crystal. Yesterday was the SEBI board meet that you spoke mm -hmm. about as well, right? So there's they've said uh, about uh, 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 all these credit rating agencies that there should be no substantial cross holding allowed between these agencies, and a credit rating agency cannot have a board seat in another credit uh, rating agency. So we'll watch out for this. Edelweiss JM Financial is also something that I'll watch out for because uh, they've spoken about the ARC asset reconstruction company listing. Watch out for that. Centrum Capital. The board will meet on Jan three to consider we'll meet on Jan three to consider and approve raising capital via equity shares. So we'll watch out for that. Amulya Leasing Finance, one of those small cap companies. Yesterday there was a big bulk deal, 35% equity changed hands. And we got the details. Promoter Samir Gupta, they've exited, it appears that they've exited around the, the entire stake that they hold. And the buyers, they include some influential investors, the likes of Vallabh Bansali, Param Value, which is Mukul Agarwal, Ajay Raylan, even Fidelity India Fund. So we'll watch out for all these stocks. Let's see how they go. Okay, yes, of course, top of mind will be the Reliance Jew as well as the Reliance communication deal. Uh, on the 85th birth anniversary of Dhirubhai Amani, both the Amani brothers have agreed to a handshake. Reliance Communications has agreed to sell most of its wireless business to Reliance Geo. The deal will add much needed impetus to Anil Ambani's debt reduction drive. Kritika Saxena now joins in with all the details. Kritika. Well, on Dhirubhai Ambani's uh, birth anniversary, Mukesh Ambani's Reliance Geo has bought some of the most prized assets of Anil Ambani's Reliance Communications. Let me take you through them one by one. First and foremost and most important was uh, the 122.4 megahertz of 4G spectrum that has been bought. Uh, and this is the entire 4G spectrum that Reliance Communications has. This was something that Airtel and Geo were neck to neck for. Even Vodafone and Idea had thrown their hat in the ring, but Geo has obviously emerged the front runner. And this puts them a tad ahead of Bharti Airtel in terms of the 4G footprint that they have. The other areas it will help Reliance Geo to complement their current services and bridge the gaps that they had in terms of network infrastructure. So instead of putting and setting up an entire infrastructure, they have gone ahead and bought 43,000 towers of Reliance Communication, 178,000 of Optic Fibre Pan India, and 248 MCN, that is the Media Convergence Nodes, which cover about 5 million square feet. Now these three areas, tower MCN and optic fiber will help Geo bridge gaps as I said and clean out any kind of glitches in terms of network capability that they had all the prized assets of Reliance communication have now been bought up by Geo and what's left essentially is some equipment business 3G business some uh, smaller portfolio some areas as far as spectrum is concerned uh, which perhaps uh, we will see announcements for in the days to come but the big chunk has gone to Reliance Geo Okay, thank you, Kritika, for that. But we also talked to a whole host of experts to talk about uh, the deal and the implications as well. Let's take a listen. Uh, so very clearly, in line with what the consolidation scenario of the industry has been heading towards, hmm. uh, again, uh, our firm has uh, significant assets, and it's a good thing that it was bid out in a very transparent manner. And I think the bidding shows that, uh, one, the remaining players are very keen and are now strategic in nature in terms of going forward. So I think the emerging landscape of the three dominant players, which is Geo, Airtel, Voda, Idea, Combine going forward, is going to be the landscape of the operator community going forward. As far as uh, pricing is uh, concerned, uh, it's a function of many things. Mm. Uh, number one, of course, uh, you know, obviously rationality is somewhere there mm. as one of the factors. 
but there is a question of the uh, competitive uh, pressures and the competitive strategies that yep. different players are adopting number one hmm. number two is the fact that pricing also depends on what exactly is the business model that you have new incumbent uh, uh, always tends to be a little more aggressive because they have to actually uh, grab market share yep. going forward you're going to see many more acquisitions and deals like this hmm. uh, in in today's case it might not be an all out share purchase it might be buying spectrum buying the tower business buying other assets hmm. but with the likes of what you saw with idea and vodafone exactly i i think you'll see a lot more consolidation happening in that sector all right that was one big news in yesterday's session but another big news was the sebi board meet sebi has allowed all exchanges to offer stocks and commodities trading from october 2018 that's not all the market regulator in a slew of reforms also announced easier access norms for foreign investors capped cross holdings in credit rating agencies as well as mutual funds to safeguard the investors interest however sebi decided to hold further discussions on its proposed norms mandating listed companies to make immediate disclosure about their loan defaults so that is something we need to watch out for later there was a discussion on the subject it was discussed at length uh, and uh, i must say that in august 2017 when we issued it we issued at our own uh, volition i mean no one really asked us to issue so it's not something that uh, uh, we uh, we felt as a concept it is it is good in terms of implementation issues uh, it was discussed at length uh, but it requires further discussion so it has been uh, deferred by the board Okay, and Yash Jain, who was tracking that meet closely, is here with more details. Yash, tell us the debt restructuring or the debt default disclosure decision has been deferred yet again. But what were the other crucial decisions that were taken at this SEBI board meet? Well, it was certainly a heavy duty agenda with SEBI chairman Ajay Tyagi tackled, and the biggest headline coming from. SEBI board meeting has to be that market regulator SEBI has given its approval for universal exchanges. This was something which both equity exchange, be it BSE or NSE, had shown interest in. Now, essentially, with this approval for universal exchanges, both BSE and NSE will be allowed to start a commodity exchange under the same roof with the equity exchange. And of course, on the other side, both commodity exchanges, MCX and NCDEX, will be allowed to enter into equities. Now, this convergence towards universal exchanges can be. be done from october 2018 also market regulator sebi announced some new regulations as far as the mutual fund space is concerned where sebi has very clearly barred mutual funds or asset management companies from holding a board seat as far as another mutual fund or asset management company is concerned they have also said that uh, one particular company cannot uh, hold over 10% in more than one mutual fund or asset management company and a direct implication of this particular uh, regulation could be that uh, companies like pnb sbi bank of baroda uh, lic will have to pay down their stake and bring it down to 10% as far as uti mutual fund is concerned sebi also gave uh, some important regulations as far as the credit rating agency is concerned where it has barred uh, one credit rating agency from holding a board seat or any sort of board representation as far as another credit rating agency is concerned it has also capped uh, the cross uh, share holding between two credit rating agencies at 10% and has also raised the the minimum net worth required for credit rating agencies to 25 crore from the current amount of 5 crore uh, sebi has also approved the listing of asset reconstruction company or arc receipts though we need more clarity as far as uh, which are the market segments uh, which would be allowed to trade in this new instrument of asset reconstruction company receipts all right yash uh, we also spoke to a whole host of experts and representatives of the sectors that will be impacted by these decisions there are technical issues here involved because the uh, default can happen for so many then is under rbi is regulatory dispensation 90 days is allowed mm. so if allow after one day there could be chaotic situation so mm. we everybody if, uh, disclosure is uh, good but then sometimes the disclosure without knowing the context mm. can create uh, systemic issues it's a positive move this is something that i've said uh, was expected Mm. and um, i think nse would certainly be ready to get into commodities once permitted at the end of the day you want uh, um, any exchange platform to uh, to permit uh, to trade all asset classes it just gives members flexibility mm. and it certainly consolidates liquidity to the extent sure. that um, that that is actually the outcome 
we fully uh, are prepared and, and and we believe that this is the path that sebi uh, wanted all of us to take uh, this is part of what was started and and, and has been discussed mm -hmm. uh, so a it's not a surprise b uh, we have been preparing for it uh, and uh, more importantly we have already uh, also represented to sebi uh, what we believe will be uh, need to be done uh, before this uh, deadline of actual mer uh, sort of merging the two uh, exchange streams basically in terms of making sure that there's a level playing field between the overall commodities markets and uh, between what the uh, uh, you know other securities markets are the intention is that uh, uh, sr should be more liquid mm. see today what happens is uh, arc should have to hold on their mandatory mm. minimum mm. which is 15 85 structure 15 percent they have to hold yes but the 85 percent which is remaining with the beneficiary bank mm. that is as on date is illiquid yes. but it will remain illiquid unless the unless sebi expands the definition of uh the qib who can trade and this is sir Okay, moving on then, putting a bit of gloom to the New Year celebrations is the news that a massive fire erupted in Mumbai's Low Parel uh, region late last night. At least 12 people have been injured and 14 casualties have been reported. The fire erupted on the third floor of the building in Kamla Mills compound in Low Parel. Police have registered an FIR again uh, under Section 304 against one above restaurant owner. All right, uh, some sort of tragedy in the backyard. We'll keep an eye out on.